Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing Zen 4. Specifically, a benchmark has actually leaked into the wild and it gives us an indication of what the clock frequencies are. Then I'd like to give you a small update from some of my sources and then we're going to move on to Sony. As there has been some kind of confirmation, not officially of course, that they are working on the PlayStation 5 Pro or even the PS6. And we'll get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Before we get into the video properly, I just want to say that I'm still getting over the plague, so this video is going to be a little shorter than perhaps normally it would be. I'm doing a lot better, but yeah, I think I had the, you know, the Rona, basically, so that was fun. I kind of got better for a while and then went, like, I, I did the reverse there. I was getting better for a while and I was like, whoop. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's start out with the benchmark. So this is quite interesting. It's an 8-core Zen 4 processor. Now, of course, this is going to be part of the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs. And we have some really interesting data here because the clock frequency of this particular sample anyway is running at 5.2 gigahertz. There's not an awful lot to say about the result itself. Obviously, we're still looking at something quite early. And it's running on the Splinter RPL, which is going to, of course, be the AM5 platform. Perhaps most interestingly is there is an iGPU, which we'll get into in just a moment. We can see, though, that the rest of the test system is nothing super intriguing here. 16 gigabytes of memory. Again, um, we are looking at uh, an 8-core processor, 5.21 gigahertz, technically. 16 threads, as we expect. Um, it's running Ubuntu, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to say, really, about the actual result. Uh, of the CPU side of the equation. However, we also have an iGPU, which is GFX 1036. This basically indicates that it's RDNA 2 based, which pretty much matches what has been rumored for some time now. And of course, this is going to be standard as the chip is coming closer and closer to mass production for release later this year. I also have a few bits of information that um, I've been personally hearing, uh, so this is some exclusive stuff. So regarding the clock frequency, this has been uh, told to me by one source. It's actually higher than the previous clock frequencies I leaked uh, a couple of weeks ago now. So basically I was told that the clock frequency of the Zen 4 16 core is going to be 5.4 gigahertz. This is single core. The 12 core is 5.3. 5.2 gigahertz for the 8 core and then bringing up the rear is the 6 core variant which is going to be 5.1 gigahertz it goes without saying that of course when all of the cores are running you're going to be seeing the clock frequency go down 2 to 300 megahertz as is standard um, the 170 watt variant apparently is the 16 core skew so this seems to be you know no flagship variant or no special version of the 16 core basically all 16 cores are apparently 170 70 watt PPT um, and obviously you know power consumption will vary if you're running like heavy AVX loads for example. As for um, IPC instructions previously on the channel I've mentioned several times at the stage that we're looking at around a 25% uh, uh, IPC gain over the Zen 3 architecture and basically my sources here have told me that it could be a little lower um, we could be seeing around 20% so 20 to 25% but of course that is going to be application dependent so there's not any huge amounts of new information there but I'm just throwing it into the video since we're covering the uh, leaked benchmark anyway and honestly I was supposed to cover this uh, a couple of days ago but yeah I've just been sick so it is what it is. 
So keeping to AMD and also throwing Sony into the equation, Sony of course have already released the PlayStation 5 and console shortages have just been plaguing it, but obviously technology continues to march on. Several times on this channel I've discussed the PlayStation 5 Pro and what I've personally been hearing are the performance targets. We'll discuss them briefly after we've gone into this new piece of news. So on a job listing on LinkedIn, and this has been spotted by Jewel Shockers, AMD are looking for a new engineer. And this is for a next generation chip development project, specifically working on the next generation of complex socks. And furthermore, there are some reports on Digi Times that basically state that Sony are working on an upgraded PlayStation 5 system. Now, to my understanding, Sony are working on a PlayStation 5 Pro. And as I've mentioned previously, we're looking at around two uh, times increase over the base model in terms of raster performance and around two and a half times greater in ray tracing performance. Although these are still really early targets, I'm telling you guys, and obviously when we're talking really early targets, it could increase or decrease. I was told though that curiously, the main benefit of the PlayStation 5 Pro isn't necessarily just the raw horsepower. And um, I have been actually kind of hearing that Sony are working a lot of uh, advanced upscaling technologies. And we've already seen hints of this, of course, of officially anyway, with Sony working on a lot of stuff for ray tracing. There's also been a ton of patents recently that have been found for Sony, one of which seems to indicate a next generation of graphics IP um, is being used for hardware-based ray tracing on a new PlayStation console. Now, I have to also throw in that I am still hearing Sony are working on a mobile PlayStation. Now, just to be clear here, it's not going to be necessarily in the same vein as the Vita. I've already put out a video on this a uh, couple of months ago, I think, but I have heard a few updates and I'll be discussing them more in depth probably in a video in the next couple of days uh, because there's actually a lot of stuff to go through here. And quite honestly, <laughs> The console isn't quite how I expected it, and it should work rather well in tandem with the PlayStation VR 2, which is kind of interesting to think about. As to my understanding, it's some kind of hybrid design, and uh, Sony have definitely been putting a lot of work into this, but it's still quite early. I don't personally believe that we're going to be seeing like the PlayStation Portable v Vita 2, whatever the hell it ends up being called, assuming it's released, launch any sooner than like late 2024, probably more likely to be something around 2025, honestly. Um, yeah. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Apologies for not being quite as energetic as normal. And yes, I am a little bit out of it still, but um, I'm almost on the road to recovery. And uh, I will hopefully see you guys soon. If you have enjoyed the video, well, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and all of that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.